let's have a look at the solar powered RMS gateway here at the Baker to Vegas race. Uh, we'll start off over here at the power mini. Now outside we have our solar panels. They're plugged into the solar panel port. Uh, at the top on the battery port, that is plugged in down here to our 80 amp hour BioNO lithium iron phosphate battery. That's our primary battery that we have operating. Then out of the load port on the power mini, we go over to the power plus. The power plus has a second battery port on it. That battery port is plugged in to our backup battery, which is a 60 amp hour BioNO battery. This allows us for automatic power switch over in the event that we de fully deplete our primary battery. The Power Plus also has two circuits, the A circuit and the B circuit. On the A circuit, we have the ICOM 7300, that's our primary station radio. On the B circuit, we have our gateway computer, which is this small micro PC that's located right here. We also have on that a two meter uh, VARA FM station. The USB port on the Power Plus is connected to the display. When the computer reboots itself, it will automatically launch all of the applications that are required in order to get the station operational. First, it logs in and then it launches RMS Packet. RMS Packet then instantly launches VARA FM. As soon as that station is up and running, the computer then automatically launches RMS Relay. RMS Relay then launches RMS Tri Mode, which in turn launches VARA HF. The entire station becomes operational, an internet connection is checked, and once it's all working and functioning, then RMS Tri Mode takes over and it begins controlling the radio, which is connected to the computer via a USB port. The computer then automatically changes the frequency and rotates between the different frequencies and bands that the station is running on. The ICOM 7300, you can see up here, is in the emergency tuner mode. That way, it's using just the internal tuner, but it's widened out the range at which it can tune an antenna. This way, we do not need to have an external tuner when we're running. When you're running the emergency tuner mode, then you need to make sure that you're running at less than 50 watts. Our keyboard and our mouse are both Bluetooth connected to the computer. And so that brings up the whole system. We also have connected via USB a GPS chip. Since we're here inside of an RV, there's no trouble for the GPS antenna to acquire a signal. The gateway knows exactly where it is and it can jump online and populate its grid square correctly. Now let's have a look outside at some of the antennas that we have. We have a 12 meter spider beam mast that's attached to the back ladder and it's resting on the bumper of the RV. If you look all the way up to the top of that, we have an N9 TAX roll-up Slim Jim attached to the top on the coax. That coax feeds all the way back through the camper back to the two meter station. When we first arrived on station, we instantly deployed the Chameleon Tactical Delta Loop because it was so fast to get on the air. We simply put the spike in the ground, put the matching unit on, attached to both of the 17 foot whips, and then at the top, attach the tap line that attaches the wire to connect the two, creating the loop. We then ran the coax all the way back to the camper and connected it to the ICOM 7300, and we had the station on the air within about 15 minutes. The next morning, we then deployed our larger antenna array. First, we deployed the 10 meter mast works, and at the top of that, we deployed the buddy hex. Now the buddy hex is resonant on six, 10, 12, 15, 17, and 20 meters. You can see those bands as they go out to the outer edges. Currently, we're pointed a little bit to the northeast. Let's point the antenna a little bit more to the east so we can pick up a few more stations. So at the base of the mast, there's simply a little hand crank, and you just crank the hand crank, and as you do, the mast, or the buddy hex, rotates to the position that you want to operate from. It takes about 20 minutes to build the buddy hex itself, and about 20 minutes to set up the mast. In order to secure the mast, we wanted to make sure that there was not going to be any safety issues. 
So we used 18 inches pieces of rebar. We used a hammer drill with a masonry bit to drill down into the desert floor here, which is pretty much concrete. Once we pounded in the stakes, we cut a tennis ball so we could stick it over the top of the rebar for safety. We then attached the two sets of guy lines and put safety lines on all of them so they were easily visible. As we were setting up the buddy hex on the mast, we also attached a halyard right here and ran it about three quarters of the way up the mast. We were then able to hoist up the Chameleon MCOM 3 portable antenna. Uh, we raised it with the feed point onto the mast. We took the counterpoise wire, ran it back over to the edge of the camper so it was oriented away from the antenna. And then we took the active element down to a Mastworks 7 meter mast. The orientation of this antenna is such that the bulk of the race course is broadside to the antenna in both directions. We're using the MCOM 3 for our Envis antenna on both 80 and 40 meters. And then we're using the Buddy Hex for our Skywave antenna on 20 and 17 meters. Both sets of coax are then run back to the trailer and they feed up into the window. In order to power the station, the first day, we simply deployed a single 120 watt power film solar foldable solar panel. The second day, we added the power film solar link kit, which linked the first set of panels to a second set of 120 watt matching panels from power film solar. For the most part, most of our power production has been kept around the 10 to 11 amps of power at a time or less, depending on the angle of the sun and the time of day. In the morning, we're generally getting anywhere from three to four amps, and then it increases throughout the day. The char solar charge controller is handling the load just fine. And that's a quick look at the solar powered RMS gateway station that we have here at the Baker to Vegas race located at the Ibex repeater site.